What's going on guys? You know over the past month, month and a half, I've actually done a lot of, a lot of game pickups. So I figured what better time than to do a pickup video than now because I haven't done one since uh, around Black Friday time. So without further ado, uh, leave your comments below what you guys think of these games as I show them off. I've kind of picked up some PS4 games, some Switch games, and even some retro stuff. So you know whatever you guys see that you have an opinion on, I've never played any of these minus a little bit of one because it's a collection so we'll get to that when we get to that and that's actually my newest pickup as of moments ago so first uh, I picked up God of War for the PlayStation 4 now I haven't beaten this game yet I've only got through the first level and it's not because I suck at the game I know a lot of you might be thinking that but I've actually been kinda stuck playing Persona 5 trying to get through that game as well as manage working and having a semi of a social life um, but this game I will get to very soon now, number two is a game I was waiting for for years because I'm a very big fan of the studio and their whole uh, decision-based gameplay. And I know you guys might be thinking it's a Telltale game, but you guys are thinking wrong. And that game is Quantic Dream's newest, from what I hear, masterpiece, Detroit Become Human. Now, Quantic Dream for you guys uh, is a studio that published games such as Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls for the PlayStation 3, both of which, uh, which I loved. So this game, when it was announced for the PlayStation 4 years ago, I've been waiting for this to come out and I can't wait to pop this one in. Now, uh, sticking on PlayStation, I picked up a PSP game, actually, recently, and it's from the makers of Loo Mines, and that's Every Extended Extra. Now, I don't know much about this game, actually. I picked this one up by coincidence. It looks like it's like a weird rhythm puzzle game. I'll probably play this eventually. Um, the story behind this is actually, when I was in the game store I usually go to, I was actually trying to pick up um, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix for the PlayStation Portable, and I had purchased it. However, when I opened it right there, uh, when I bought it, I noticed there wasn't a UMD in it. I brought that to the people's attention, and they were uh, really surprised about that, but they said I can get whatever game on the shelf that was around the same price range. So, I mean, the game was only going for three bucks, and this is three bucks. So I figured I might as well get it. I played a little bit of Lou Mines back in the day. So I figured this is a decent enough game, hopefully. I'll find out when I play it. Um, now, we're gonna stick with PlayStation. And I picked up this RPG classic from what I'm hearing, even though the second one's apparently more prestigious, but I saw this and I figured I had to get it. And this game is Suikoden for the original PlayStation. Now, you know, this game really confused me because I thought it was a two-disc game, but it's one of those rare uh, PS1 games that use the dual-disc container um, only because I believe the manual itself is a very thick manual, so they needed that extra space. Now, Suikoden, to my understanding, is a game that's based on, I think it's Japanese mythology, I'm not really sure, uh, but I've heard great things about this series, I've never played any of the games, so I'm looking forward to putting this one in eventually and enjoying the game as a whole. Um, now with that being said, let's go to another RPG, I believe, and this is an import I picked up for the Sega Dreamcast, and it's called Climax Landers. Now, I didn't really know much about this game when I picked it up, but I do have a little bit of a Dreamcast import collection, so I figured I might as well get it, only to find out later on when I googled it that this game is actually Time Stalkers here in America. Now, the game as itself looks very artsy. I've never played Time Stalkers. Um, I've heard it's a decent game, and this game I'm probably going to be using the Google Translate app to play, to read the text and the dialogue because I don't know Japanese which is something I really need to learn if I want to start these import collections but yeah guys uh, Climax Landers for the Sega Dreamcast I always thought it was interesting how Dreamcast games um, in Japan have like an oranginess to them that in America it was just kinda like black and red but with that being said we mentioned imports and one thing I picked up this isn't a game but it's a little bit of an accessory for a system that I've kind of learned to love that's the Sega Saturn. And what I picked up is the Memory Card Plus. Now, for many of you people who know, the Saturn has a cartridge slot onto it. And by picking up one of these, or like um, 
and Action Replay, it allows you to play imports on your Saturn. Now, a lot of Saturn games are a lot cheaper to play, uh, the Japanese versions and the American version, because in Japan, the Sega Saturn sold phenomenally well, as opposed to how it sold here in the States. Now, there's a little bit of a learning curve, because I, to my understanding, unless you're playing a fighting game or a platformer, uh, if you want to play some of those Saturn RPGs, like Panzer Dragoon Saga, which I'm probably going to end up buying the American version eventually, um, the Japanese versions are a hell of a lot cheaper, but you just have to understand the language, and you're going to need one of these, or to mod your Saturn in order to play the game. Now, I should have brought this game up, because I just remembered I had it in this pile, uh, for Dreamcast games. What I picked up was Space Channel 5. Now, Space Channel 5, never played of, but I know it has a, a nice following behind it. It's gotten great reviews, to my understanding. Space Channel 5 is like a rhythm dance game, where you're kind of in space and, uh, you're a news reporter that I guess you beat your enemies by dancing with them. Uh, I'm not really sure, but I do like that this has like a holographic cover to it, if you can see. It does a little weirdness when you move it, just like old school games used to do. You don't really see that a lot nowadays. Uh, but yeah, guys, picked up Space Channel 5 for like five bucks, complete, new, still in shrink wrap. I'm probably going to be unshrink wrapping that eventually just to play it. Now, I mentioned Saturn. So I picked up three Saturn games here. And what are they, you might be wondering. Well, one game, Thunderstrike. Uh, apparently, Thunderstrike 2, actually. It is Thunderstrike 2. I always thought it was just Thunderstrike. But the 2 is actually in the crosshairs of the aiming, which is kind of cool. It's apparently a 3D army game, a helicopter gunship, where you're just kind of blowing things up. It's made by Core Studios. I think Core had a thing to do with the... Tomb Raider series later on, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but I figured I needed a new Saturn game, and I picked this one up, because I don't really have many uh, shooters for the Saturn, I guess this kind of is a shooter, and it was relatively cheap, only 20 bucks over at Digital Press, and you know, nice case, all in good condition, the case isn't broken like a lot of Saturn games get, so I picked that up, also from Digital Press, I picked up Hexen. Now, Hexen is made by id Software, which many of you guys know for Wolfenstein, for Doom, games back in the day that were revolutionary in the first-person shooting genre. And this game seems like it's a part of the first-person shooting genre, except a lot more interesting. Uh, it looks like it has a lot more to do with aliens. Guns aren't your only weapons. I'm seeing right here in a picture on the back, a guy has like an axe. Um, and this was another $20 game I picked up, and I figured, why not? It seems cool, um, it seems interesting, just look at that cover, and I can't wait to put this one in. Now, another classic Saturn game I picked up, I had to get, got a really good deal on it, and that's Fighting Vipers. Now, Fighting Vipers, I know, many people love it as a fighting game, it's a, a game that I believe uses the Saturn's high resolution 480i signal at some points. But the game itself even came with its little foam thing, even though I don't think this is the original one. But I don't have a lot of Saturn fighting games, and you know, the Sega Saturn is almost solely remembered for their fighting games, but more their 2D fighting games. However, this game as a whole, it's made by Sega, and Sega's well known for Virtua Fighter. Um, so I've been wanting to actually pick Fighting Vipers up for a long while, and being able to have finally gotten it for a good price, why not? Um, so now we're going to move on to my Switch games I picked up. Now, we're going to start with this one, the Resident Evil Revelations Collection. Now, when this game came to the Switch, I kind of wanted to pick it up, but I wasn't a big fan that it required you to download Resident Evil Revelations 2, I believe. Um, Basically, on the cartridge, it's just Resident Evil Revelations 1, and there's like a download code for Revelations 2. However, I've heard great things about both games. I've never played either of them, but I figure a Resident Evil game on the Switch, it'd be a fun thing to play in bed at night, get myself scared, or play on road trips, you know, something along those lines. I also picked up a game that apparently a lot of stores don't sell the physical version of this for, and I found it at Best Buy. It's called This Is The Police. It's made by THQ Nordic. 
Um, and apparently within this game, you play the role as like a, a police officer, and you're trying to basically track down criminals and stop crime. At least that's what I'm getting out of it. And I figured it would be cool. It seems like it's more of a strategy game. It's not like an action game at all. But I figured, you know, I picked this one up for I think like $20, $30 maybe. And it seems very interesting. I know it came out on other consoles. However, I felt like the Switch version would probably be the funnest way to play this. Now, also, I picked up the Bayonetta collection. Now, more specifically, this does say it's Bayonetta 2, but it does include the full version game download of Bayonetta 1, uh, which I've never played either of these games on the Wii U or on the PlayStation 3, which Bayonetta 1 was on. However, I've told if I like Devil May Cry and if I like the original God of War games, I will love Bayonetta. Now, with Bayonetta 3 on the horizon, I figured I had to pick up this game. And I'm very excited to play it. Now, the last game for the month, or the month and a half of April to May of 2018, just came in the mail, mail moments ago, released today. And that is the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. Now, this game is a collection of games, and I, this is the game I mentioned when I said I played sort of some of it. Uh, because, you know, I've played a bunch of Street Fighter games in my time, but this game has... 12 Street Fighter games on it. It has Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter, another version of Street Fighter 2. Then you have Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting Edition, Super Street Fighter 2 The New Challengers, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter Alpha 2, Street Fighter Alpha 3, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, Street Fighter 3 A New Generation, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact. Now, it's funny because I just last year with the Switch launch picked up, um, what was it, Street Fighter 2, the final something or something that came out on the Switch, I can't remember the name right now, and pretty much, as much as that's a standalone title, I should have just waited a year to get 12 of these games for the same price I paid for one. Now, Street Fighter is a legendary fighting franchise, they still have tournaments on it, uh, and Street Fighter 2 is probably the most prevalent Street Fighter game, even though personally on the Dreamcast I was a big fan of the Alpha games. Um, but yeah, I definitely am looking forward to playing this game. I know they've high resolution to the, uh, the graphics, they made them look better, and overall, I'm looking forward to playing this game. It's a fighting game collection, so that'll be great for like car rides and stuff, or when I'm just bored for a pick up and play game. So, props up to Capcom on this, guys. So, those are my pickups for the month of April to May 2018. What do we have here? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 games. Um, so I don't know when the next time we're going to be doing another pickup video is, but I pretty much, I guess I'll save everything that I get going forward for the next video. As always, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel, share this video, go check out all my other videos, guys. And as always, have a good day. See you, bye.